Affinity Photo version 2 has got a new live mesh warp feature, which you can use with shapes, images, but you can also use it with type. Beforehand, you could use mesh warp, but it was destructive. Now, with that selected, go to layer, and down to new live filter layer, and go down here, distort and mesh warp. I must have been slightly confusing now because I've got a live mask layer. I quite often go to that by accident but you want to go to the live filter layer, mesh warp, select that. As soon as you do that, that bounding box for the type is changed into this warp box, whatever it's called. And you can modify the source, destination. I'm gonna go with destination. Source is fine, but you're sort of work, working, really, you don't know what you're gonna get, I think. You can also synchronize between them. But let's go with this. A very basic warp, simply just click around this edge. You don't have to do that, you can click inside as well, but I'll show you how to do that later. And you can drag that up, drag that around, but it would be great if you could actually save these warps to sort of a panel or something. There's no feature for saving the presets, which is a pity because you might create a really interesting warp. How do you save these for future use? you know, reapply it. Anyway, nor is there any blend mode feature, which would be nice. I mean, you can blend mode over here if you wish. That's always quite useful. But you can see you can warp and distort this design. But also we can do double click and then it will create this in here. Double click here and you'll see it creates another one. And at this point now, you can just drag there. You can squeeze it in different ways. Also, you can Double click there and create another point. Double click there and you can create points. I think personally, it starts to get messy when you create lots and lots of points. More doesn't always translate to better. And in this case, sometimes you can get some really ugly looking distortions using this approach. But you can create some, I'm just gonna create something like this. And once you're happy with it, oh, you can also convert between, which is Quite nice, you can select points and convert back and forth between sharp and smooth. So you click done, and there you have it. And it's still live. So you can go over here, key panel, layers. So layers panel, you can expand that out. I really wish they would have improved this a bit. They say they've improved it. Personally, I think it would should be nicely inset a little bit more. It just makes it very hard. It's very thin line. You really can't see, and I think it, would do with being slightly further over. It'd be nice if you could modify that as a preference, but you can't. Also, you can create colors for these as well. It'd be nice if the color was actually here and not over this side, which I find slightly confusing, by the by. But you can always, at any point, just go here, and that's the key thing, double click. Or actually, it's just click. I think you just click it. You can click it. I always double click. I love double clicking. So you've got that and it's, a, it's active again. So you can decide, you know what? I don't want that. You can click reset. Now weirdly, you'll notice that the reset is slightly weird because before the bounding box was around the type, now it's around the document. I mean, it's no big deal, but it's slightly odd. There are a few quirks like that in this. Maybe it's just me, but I just think that that should reset around the actual type but still you can drag that in see because if you type and drag it from there it hardly changes this is slightly different than the way it was beforehand so it's not really resetting and also now you can see so you can do that again it's not matching what the behavior before so it's not a proper reset and you can see so you can squeeze this in and you can do a whole load of different changes and again once you're happy with it, click done, and you've got your design. Again, you can select the text there, and you can move it around, and you can still modify it. So you decide, oh, I don't want that. Let's go to the artistic text tool, and I've just made a mistake in spelling. I haven't, but you could. Just change it to E. Or maybe change the color. You think, oh, I don't want that color. I can change that. Let's make it red or orange or green, and so on. You can change the font and it's still live. You can if you want. You don't want the mesh warp anymore. Just simply remove it. 
click there to remove it. Or if you make a mistake, you can always undo and put it back again. Now you can have blend modes with this as well. So you can see here, you've got this one selected, not this text, but this, the mesh warp. So mesh warp selected, go here, multiply. That's still normal. The mesh warp, even though it looks like it's selected, I think that's a slight unusual feature as well. It's not. So you can see when you go through the lighten, you can change it. See, it then becomes a bit like the other live filters as well. But it's a pity there's no panel or feature along the control bar to give you this option. So you can see, you can create some interesting combinations of type. You've got the original text still live. You've got this live effect on top of it. So you can create some interesting designs with that. But what you can also do, and I'm gonna show you, there is, a, I think, a bug. Now this might be fixed, maybe it isn't a bug. Maybe you might say, that's not a bug. But I'm just gonna go here, artistic text. And I'm just gonna create some text. The word text. Because what you can also do, is you can go to the layers panel, go down to effects. I love that new icon change. So much better than before. Still doesn't mean much, effects, but still click. And you've got here 3D. I'm just going 3D, but you could add shadows, you can add glows. I always default, always to 3D. Just easier to quickly demonstrate. So just go like that. Click close. Now with this, you can select this, keep this selected. Again, go back to layer, new live filter, not the mask one. <laughs> I always go to the mask by accident, go to distort and mesh warp. And you can see it's bounding box, exactly the same as before. And just drag. And now you can see what happens. Why isn't this text, the, the 3D effect, the layer effect that I've added, also changing? It doesn't seem to do that. And I'm certain that didn't, that's not the behavior that I would expect. It's very odd, still. That's what it's doing, on my version anyway. I mean, maybe, so you can now double click still, you can, but it does create a very ugly looking effect. And it's, I don't think that's really what was wanted, is it? Anyway, so done. But of course, as with most things, there's a workaround. It's not a great workaround, but it's still a workaround. What you can do, simply select the, I don't want to activate it, just select the mesh, drag it up above, and then you've got your effect. <laughs> So now, of course, it's not associated with the text. It's associated with everything that's below it, which is not ideal. So you can do, you can do it, but it's just not an ideal solution. Now, I guess you could always then, of course, group it together. So let's just go to layer and group. I can never find, oh, group, it's over here. And also, of course, as always, there's a shortcut, command or control G and you can group it. So it's connected with it then, but it seems to be a bit of a workaround that you shouldn't need to do. I think it's uh, odd, but it's still live. So you can still go here to the text and change it. If you decide you don't want, I want type there. So you've got the word type instead and change the font. And there it is. But even then it's slightly odd. You've got a weird sort of, <laughs> there, is a, there are some quirks in this. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Move it around. Hmm, okay. Clearly, maybe version 0 0.1, 0 0.2, some of these issues will be worked through, but that seems a bit odd as well. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. If any comments, always great to hear. Maybe you found no issue at all with it. Maybe you think this is working perfect, this is the way, but it is great still to have this type feature, this warping feature and I will be testing it with other shapes and designs as well, just to see if I find that works slightly odd. But again, please put some comments about it if you found no issues at all. It'd be great to know. Hope you found it of interest. Thank you much.